Mark chapter number 4. Look with me real quick tonight. Verse number 35. Mark 4 and verse number 35. Bible says in the same day when the evening... Wasn't that a great message? i got to stop. Right? I'm trying to mind the Lord. Was that not a great message? Yes, Pastor just prayed. I feel, I feel like an appetizer following the main course, to be honest with you. That was great. Thank you, Pastor. I needed it. Amen. Verse 35, The same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. There were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. It might have been full, but it was still floating. That thing was slammed full of water, but it was still afloat. I'll let you meditate on that. In verse number 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep, on a pillar, and they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mind you now, the boat's still full of water. <laughs> yeah, it was. Verse 40, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Look with me, chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side. Before the other side could ever be a reality to those that were on board that ship, there was some things or something that had to be realized. And that something is this. God was in complete control of what was going on. And that something we often refer to as being the sovereignty of God. Now, according to Webster's Dictionary, 1828, by definition, the word sovereignty means one who has supreme power and having possession of uncontrollable power, of rather of having possession of, 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 of uncontrollable power of which absolute sovereignty belongs to God and God only. He, in other words... Just the bottom line, he's got, he's got it under control. It's in check. He's got it under control. When Jesus said in verse 35, let us pass over to the other side, he was speaking with extreme sovereignty and that settled it. In other words, everybody on board that ship could have went in the hinder part of the ship and went to sleep just like he did because he had it under control. He said, you're going to the other side. Right. Now I want you to lock and load that tonight. You are going to the other side. Glory. That word sovereignty, when you mention that, I noticed some of you kind of twitched. A lot of people get real nervous when you mention the sovereignty of God. But that's all right. One thing about sovereignty, it does not relieve you and I of a personal responsibility. Right. See, God has made every one of us a free moral agent tonight. In other words, we have a choice in certain things in our life. Now, anyone that wanted to get into that boat could get in it. Would you agree with me? Anybody want to get in could get in. <laughs> but I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I do know this. If they wanted to go to the other side, they had to be on board that ship. Right, right. They had to get into it. Right. Now, I notice this, and I want you to notice something with me. Mankind's got a responsibility, and that is to get into the boat. To get into the ship. That's mine and your responsibility. Listen, I can't make that decision for you. You can't make it for me. 
but we all have the free moral choice of whether or not to get in the ship or not. I'm just glad I got in the ship. <laughs> I don't regret that one bit. And I'll go ahead and tell you this, Miss Janet, it won't be always, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. But Doug, there's going to be times of heartache and trouble and valleys. I mean, there's going to be some storms. Even after you get in the ship, we read that right here, storm arose. I'm going to tell you again, praise God, I don't think you got it last time. When he's in the ship, you ain't going down. I'm glad I'm in the boat with him and he's in the boat with me. <laughs> oh, my soul. I want you to notice something, chapter 4, verse 37. Bible says here in verse 37, And he arose and rebuked the wind, and they said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, one day there's coming a day when there will be no more storms, there will be a great calm. Now, stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. When you get to chapter 5, after all you just read in chapter 4, chapter 5 kind of reminds me of heaven, which that's mine and your other side. See what I'm saying? Down here, there's when it comes to storms in life, Brother Doug, there's our side of the storm. There's his side of the storm. And then there's the other side of the storm. One day, we're going to be on the other side of the storm. Will you say amen to that? Now, this is not my message, but I want you to grab this real quick before I get to it. It'll help you understand where I'm going with this. I want to preach tonight for a little while on this thought. Getting in and going over. Getting in and going over. Now you remember here in chapter number 4, they were getting in. By the time you get to chapter number 5, verse 1, they got over. <laughs> Once you notice something with me, you'll find in chapter 5, after you get in and you go over, Chapter number 5, notice with me. When you get to chapter 5, the devil's been cleared out. He's nowhere to be found. In other words, look with me, verse 2 real quick. Chapter 5, verse 2 says, And when he come out of the ship immediately, there met him, met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and fetters and the fetters broke in pieces, and no, neither could any man tame him. Right. Right. I'm gonna tell you, you and I no match for the devil. Right. You can go ahead and mark that down. But look with me, verse number eight. Bible says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man thou unclean spirit. Verse number 9, he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were nigh unto them, unto the, unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Verse 13, For with Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out, and entered into the swine, and, he, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and there were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. I might should have said on the other side, the devil's choked out. There ain't no, ain't no devils on the other side. When you and I get to glory, we'll not have any more devil to, to, to hinder us. We'll not have any more devil to hold us. We'll not have any more devil to show up and tempt us and try to get you and I to fall and to go astray. There'll be no more devil to cause any more heartaches and pain and sorrow and sickness in our life. I want you to notice something else on the other side. Now, we're talking about the other side. The devil's going to be cleared out, and on the other side, all disease is going to be cured. <laughs> oh, I tell you about me and Miss Cindy. She's watching my live stream, her and little Allie. Now, we didn't have little Allie then, but Miss Cindy, I'll tell you about me and her one time. This was, we was lost as a goose. 
or as I say up here, lost as a ball in high weeds. I will tell you about me and her going to see Ernest Angley one time. We was lost now. How many of you know Ernest Angley? Brother Dave knowed him. How many of you rest of them know Ernest Angley? Y'all ain't never heard of Ernest Angley up here? Oh, Lord God, I need to forget that story then if you don't know Ernest Angley. <laughs> How about Oral Roberts? Yeah, yeah. Oral Roberts. Yeah. Well, Ernest Angley in the South was what Oral Roberts is up here. Okay, in Carolinas. How many put y'all in the South but in the Carolinas? Anyhow, we went to Ernest Angley one time. We was going, I mean, we heard it could heal. I just wanted to go see we was inquisitive. <laughs> Me and hers lost, Daddy. Y'all remember we lost. And when we got to the door, we went in the Coliseum there in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, walked it through the door. And you know what they wanted to do? They wanted to charge us a price for a ticket. Oh so I ain't going to pay that man nothing. But I'm going to tell you, there come a time in our life where they won't be paying no preachers to do nothing. Yeah, right. Listen, Ernest Angley couldn't heal no more, praise God, than I could heal. But I'm, I'm glad to tell you tonight and report to you there's one on the other side. When we get to the other side, there'll be no sickness there because we'll be complete, we'll be whole. We'll be everything he wants you and I to be. Notice on the other side, disease is cured. Look at verse 25 real quick. Bible said in a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things and many physicians and had spent all that she had was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she had been healed of that plague. Yeah. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing gets by him does it? And his disciples said, said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about her and bound her out, looked round about to see her that, she, that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. It's always good to tell him the truth. He already knows the truth. He just wants you and I to tell him. So we he'll know, praise God, we're in agreement. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy th Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy place. Listen, you go ahead and mark it down that I said it. On this Sunday night, on the other side, there won't be any Alzheimer's. There won't be any heartaches. There won't be any heart attacks. There'll be no cancer. There'll be no strokes. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no sickness because on the other side, all of that's history. I never liked history in school, but when I get to the other side, I'm glad all the history is going to be behind me. I mean, listen, they won't be as much as allergies in heaven. Oh, listen, he's the one that cures all disease. And I know the sister back here, she's a, 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 a chiropractor. And, yeah, what? He said that. I didn't, sister. He said, I, Pastor said that. But on the other side, we won't need any chiropractors. I hate to tell you, be out of business. We won't need any doctors. There won't be no need for hospital rooms. There won't be any need, praise God, for surgeons. There won't be any need for going to, to get your sinuses cleared out. Why? Because on the other side, there's not only no devil. But there's no disease. Yeah. No something else. On the other side, death will be conquered. Yeah. You got to worry about that. I don't worry about it now. Right. See, death is just a vehicle. Right. Kind of like Elijah, whenever God sent that taxi down out of heaven. Yeah. I can't help but think the Holy Ghost might have been a riding on board and said, Get in, we're going over. Yeah. 
And all Elijah got in, praise God, and they went over to the other side. Hey, listen, there's coming a day when the Lord himself went ascend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. One day we going over to the other side, either by the rapture or by the way of the grave. Notice with me real quick, verse 21. The Bible says, I got to find my place. Said when Jesus was passed over by the ship unto the other side, much people you say we're on the other side now. <laughs> much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there come one out of the, come one from the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. He besought him greatly, saying, "My little daughter." She lieth at the point of death, and I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed, that she may live. Now look down, verse 35. While he yet spake, there came a ruler of the synagogue of the house, certain which said, Thy daughter's dead, why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And you know the story. When we get on over to verse number 41, the Bible said he took the damsel by the hand and he said unto her, Talitha Kumai. I heard a black preacher one, preach one time on this thought, the little Talitha Kumai girl. That's what he called little Talitha Kumai. It was a great message. But he said unto her, Talitha Kumai, meaning damsel, arise. Notice the Bible said, which being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. I wonder if that could have been that woman had the issue of blood for 12 years. I wonder if that might have been her daughter. You ever thought about that? She was 12. That woman had that issue of blood. That's just thought. That's just a little something for thought. But Jordan, that's something for you to think on. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. Commanded that something should be given her to eat. Now I want to show you something. On the other side there won't be no hearst. There'll be no graveyards. Mortician's going to be out of business. Ain't no morticians in here are there. One day we, listen, the other side there'll be no more death. No more separation. Every one of us in here tonight, we've had to say goodbye to somebody we love. Might have been a mom, a dad. Could have been a husband, a wife. It could have been somebody, that acquaintance that we were real close friends with. But every one of us have experienced the sorrows of death. Brother Ray, we'll get over there. We won't sing anything about death. Right. We're going to sing, everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will sing and sh You know, my wife said he don't need to be singing. <laughs> but now I want you to notice something with me. Here's the message. Now I'm just going to be real quick. Why didn't everybody get in the boat? Go over to the other side. If you study this out, you'll find that the Lord didn't tell them to leave. Everybody that was among them that day could have got into the boats and went over to the other side. But why didn't they? I'm going to give you three things real quick. First of all, could it be some didn't get in because of the time? Look at verse 35. How in the world I get old? Chapter 6. Lord mercy. Verse 35. The same day when the evening was come. Kind of laid over in the day. The evening had come. I'm going to tell you one thing about getting in. If you're going to get in, if you're here tonight and you're lost, this is the kind of atmosphere that God arranges for a certain purpose and for a reason. And that's for you if you're lost to get in and be saved. See that boat over in Noah's day, that's a type of salvation. Brother Aaron, don't you, where you at brother Aaron? You work over there toward Noah's ark, don't, don't you? That's a, type, that's a type of salvation. Listen, if you want to get in and get over, you're going to have to get saved. You'll never get to the other side 
without being saved by the grace of God. Oh, but wait a minute, preacher. I, I got plenty of time. Well, that's what they thought. See, they missed going over to the other side because they thought they had plenty of time. Life is like a vapor. It appears for a little time, then vanisheth away. Bible says, Boast not thyself for tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Some of you here tonight, you think you've got plenty of time. I'll go ahead and tell you, you can find a grave somewhere with a headstone of somebody that's already went over. They either passed over and went to hell or they went over and went to heaven. And if they went to heaven, they went by the way of grace through faith in the Lord Jesus. They died and went to hell, they went trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot because Christ shed his blood for whosoever will. Some may have not went over because they thought they had plenty of time. I'm going to tell you what, some of them need to go ahead and get in tonight as the pastors well said when it comes to getting in this meeting. Yeah. Getting in a revival. Yeah. I mean being a part of something big. Yeah. <laughs> part of something great. But I know what you're thinking. I got plenty of time. There's several more days. I'm going to tell you, you may not see tomorrow. I'd go ahead and get in tonight. Right. Yeah. Hey, I go ahead and tell you this, the water's fine. Yep. Yeah. You don't need to be an ankle deep Christian. Right. Boy, that hurt getting down like that. You don't need to be a knee deep Christian. Right. You don't need to be a waist deep Christian. Right. You just need to get saturated, submerged in this thing and, and get a little fanatical. Right. You say, well, preacher, I'm not made up like you do. Well, I'll tell you what. I guarantee you if I could watch you at a ball game, if you go to ball games or see you run. How many of you like NASCAR in here? Ain't going on up. Amen, little fella. God bless your Lord, Brother Ray. Now you get real excited when you when your fellas winning. Well, let me find somebody else. You get real excited. Well, you know what? I read over there, we got one that won. His name's the Lord Jesus Christ. He won, he won a race about 2,000 years ago. He gave his life on Calvary for mining your sin. And he's conquered death, hell, and the grave. And listen, it's available tonight to whosoever will. If you'll just come, you may not have time, but get in. You won't see revival, you've got to be a candidate for it. You got to be a willing participant. You say, "Well, preacher, I'm not. I don't have the kind of makeup you have." Well, I'm glad. I want want a bunch of little bobbies running around. I can hear my wife saying from home, "Amen," right there. <laughs> you may not be made up like that, but I tell you, there ought to be something in the gable in your soul. Yeah. When we hear preaching like the pastor preached, we all just something. I'll just say, mm, "Y'all just say Amen," right there. Yeah. Amen. I like that. That's good preaching, preacher. Well, you say I'm not vocal. Well, I promise you this. If your wife, it burns your food, you'll get kindly vocal. I'm preaching to somebody right there. Some didn't get in because of the time. It's time to get in. I mean, really it is. I tell you what, there's such an atmosphere and excitement around here. Y'all just get in. Amen. You won't find this everywhere. This kind of atmosphere, God is right here. Now you think about that. God, out of all the places, He could have stopped. He said, hey, <laughs> I think I'm going to go down there to Emmanuel Baptist Church and hang out with them folks a while. He's here. Say, so how do you know He's here? I feel Him. Say, well, preacher, our salvation, I'm not talking about salvation, I'm just talking about feeling what we have sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Boy, it's good to feel saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to know that my knows that I know that it knows that I know that I'm saved. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I just have to tell it. Yeah. I'm glad I'm saved in the family of God. Yeah. I'm glad I'm a candidate for whatever God wants and whatever God desires. Amen. But now's the time, it's time to get in. Some of you kind of looking at me strange. Some didn't get in because of the time. Now watch this. Some didn't get in because of the twelve. What do you mean, preacher? Look with me real quick. Verse number one. 
verse 1 of chapter 4. The Bible said, And he began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship. And he sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the on land. There was a whole multitude there. Now look with me, verse 36. And when they had sent away the twelve, sent away the multitude, I wonder who sent that multitude away? Could it have been the disciples that sent them away? Look again. And they sent away the multitude. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Undoubtedly, the disciples sent him off. Now, I want to ask you a question. The Bible says in Galatians, Ye did run well. Who? Not what? For a long time I preached it. What? One day the Holy Ghost said, My pay if you go over there and read that one more time, and I did. And it says, Ye did run well. Who? Who? Who has hindered you? I want to ask you, if you're here tonight and lost, who are you got your eyes on? Who's your hero? Who's the one that's hindering you? I'm going to tell you, we don't realize many times as God's people, and the saying stands true, we are, many times we'll be the only Bible that some people ever read. Our life, our testimony says volumes. I'm going to tell you, I can't throw in the towel tonight. Why, preacher? Because I got two girls. Two out of three. And they need to get in the family of God. They need to get saved. I don't know who they got their eyes on. But me and their mama going to try our best. And their sister, we're going to do our best to live right before. Because you see, somebody's watching you. Could it be somebody here this week won't get in get in this meeting and get involved in this revival because they got your eyes on you and they say, Hey, if the everything's fine if so and so's right with God. Everything's good in my life if everything's good in their life. I want to ask you a question. God did not tell you and I to keep our eyes on him, but he said, Look unto him. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Keep your eyes on the Lord. He's the one. Who's hindered you? I found in this walk of life three things can hinder us. Three, three individuals. Number one, Satan can. Satan can hinder Ourselves can hinder ourselves. You want to have revival this week, you know what it might mean. It might mean, as the pastor already said, it may mean you going to somebody and say, listen, I've, been, I've said some bad things about you and I shouldn't have. I've had something in my heart for a long time and I, I ain't told nobody. And I just want you to know it's gone and I love you. Listen, bitterness and envy and jealousy Amongst God, people will hinder revival quicker than anything I know. These disciples were men just like you and I were. If you cut them, Brother Doug, they bled. Brother, Jay, Brother uh, Jordan, if you, if you slapped them, they'd probably get upset and want to slap you back. I knew Simon Peter probably want to cut her ear off. I mean, they were flesh and blood. Listen, they were not beyond reproach. They made some mistakes. No doubt the life they live wasn't always the life they should live. And may I go ahead and tell you, neither is mine and yours. <laughs> We're not perfect. We're just forgiven. But that don't give us a license to sin. That don't give us a license to go out there and live like the devil. That doesn't give us a license to hinder somebody from getting in the family of God. Or Brother Clint, hinder somebody from getting involved in this service and in the revival meeting that God has here. I think we ought to just get fanatical for Jesus. I'm closing with this and I'm done. My Lord, I said five minutes. Lord, forgive me for misleading these people. 
Some may have not went over to the other side because of time. Some may have not went over because of the twelve. But it could be that others didn't go over because of the territory. What do you mean territory, preacher? According to chapter 2, let's look back there, chapter 2, verse 1. Bible says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. That word Capernaum, every, listen, God doesn't mince words in the Bible. He writes what he means to write. He's had written what he wants written, and everything has a reason and a purpose. Did you know that name, Capernaum, literally means a place of comfort. In other words, something didn't get over and go to the other side because they were just comfortable. They were satisfied. They liked the territory as it was. You know, like the preacher preached, you're talking about two messages just hand in hand. You talk, some just like get their toes wet. That's all right. I'll come to Sunday morning. Sunday night can't find night. I'll tell you a good crowd here tonight. But I would hope to think that was this many here on every Sunday night. You know, I'm from Pageland. How I many of you know where Pageland's at? It's a little spot on the map. Some just want to get their toes wet. Then others, they want to get their ankles wet. Some just want to get in, get waist deep in the water and get you know get from here to Amway. But then there's some just got a good case of the care knots. I'm gonna tell you what. It was a great day in my life when I got saved. Amen. Miss Melissa, I wouldn't take the world for it. All the money in Fort Knox couldn't replace it. Every, all the riches of this world could never replace what God did for me. But I'll tell you right now, the day I decided that I'm going with Jesus and I'm going to follow him is a world of difference between then and now. Right, sure. You say, preacher, have you messed up any time? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I like to tell you, I, I like to tell you, I've lived a perfect life, but I ain't. Right. I ain't always been close to God. But boy, I want to be. Yeah, sure. In my heart, in the last several weeks, God's been working on me. God's been working in my family. I wish I could read you a little note Miss Cindy wrote me. Stuck it right. She wrote me a little list of things against. She calls them toiletries. Because you can't bring so many, but so many things on the, on the plane with you, you know. But up under all them little toiletries, she wrote me. She said she was praying for me. She was praying that God would do something for Emmanuel Baptist Church and she was praying that God do something for me. Yeah. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, my wife, she, she's a great Christian. And she's a prayer warrior. And boy, when she says she's praying for me, whoo, I feel like kind of, you know, attacking hell with a water gun. That day when I said, Brother Clint, I'm just getting in going over. It ain't mean I've lived perfect. I've messed up, made wrong decisions. Got a lot of heartaches I have to live with, a lot of valleys I've been through. But you know, I don't, I don't regret any one of them because it's brought me to where I am right now. Yeah, right. Only regret I have tonight is my wife and little Allie, my daughter's not with me. Not able to experience what was, but we're coming back in July. And I tell you, I'm expecting it to be the, like then like it is right now, Brother Doug. Yeah. I'm expecting an atmosphere because people don't just want to get in. Yeah. But they want to get in and get saturated and go on over to where God wants them to be. Yeah. Yeah. You want to have revival? Get in and go over. Yeah. Good. Turn loose of whatever it is you're hanging on to. And trust it with Jesus. I'm going to tell you, when you come to church, when you come to the house of God, you will not experience what we're experiencing right here in many churches. It's cold. It's dry. 
It's deserted. A lot of places are like God's live. What we have right here, what we're experiencing today, tonight, tomorrow, and the rest of this week, may we not take it for granted. Let's get in and go over. Preacher, I'm going to turn it over to you. God bless you. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.